a man, as a general rule, owes very little to what he is born with. A man is what he makes of himself. I would impress upon your minds the fact that if you want to do a man justice, you should believe what a man says himself rather than what people say he says. A man's own judgment should be the final appeal in all that relates to himself. The most successful men, in the end, are those whose success is the result of steady accretion. Man is an animal which, alone among the animals, refuses to be satisfied by the fulfillment of animal desires. It is the man who carefully advances step by step dot 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 who is bound to succeed in the greatest degree. Man is the result of slow growth. That is why he occupies the position he does in animal life. What does a pup amount to that has gained its growth in a few days or weeks besides a man who only attains it in as many years? There cannot be mental atrophy in any person who continues to observe, to remember what he observes, and to seek answers for his unceasing hows and whys about things. I have always considered myself as an agnostic. Don't keep forever on the public road, going only where others have gone. Observe. Remember, compare. Wherever you may find the inventor, you may give him wealth, or you may take from him all that he has, and he will go on inventing. He can no more help inventing than he can help thinking, or to breathe. When one door closes, another one opens. Leave the beaten track behind occasionally, and dive into the woods. Every time you do, you will be certain to find something you have never seen before. Night is a more quiet time to work. It aids thought. Great discoveries and improvements invariably involve the cooperation of many minds. Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work in hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. The day will come when the man at the telephone will be able to see the distant person to whom he is speaking. The great advantage it possesses over every other form of electrical apparatus consists in the fact that it requires no skill to operate the instrument. One day there will be a telephone in every major city in the USA. The telephone will be used to inform people that a telegram has been sent. It is not, of course, complete yet, but some sentences were understood this afternoon, I feel, that I have at last struck the solution of a great problem. The day is coming when telegraph wires will be laid onto houses just like water or gas, and friends converse with each other without leaving home. I have discovered that my interest in my dear pupil, Mabel, has ripened into a far deeper feeling than that of mere friendship. In fact, I know that I have learned to love her very sincerely. Morse conquered his electrical difficulties, although he was only a painter, and I don't intend to give in either till all is completed. Dumbness comes from the fact that a child is born deaf, and that it consequently never learns how to articulate, for it is by the medium of hearing that such instruction is acquired. Can imagination picture what the future of this invention is to be. We may talk by light to any visible distance without any conduction wire. In general science, discoveries will be made by the photophone that is undreamed of just now. A 
person without a practical end in view becomes a crank or an idiot. Such persons fill our asylums. There are two critical points in every aerial flight. It's beginning and it's end. Educate the masses. Elevate their standard of intelligence. And you will certainly have a successful nation. America is a country of inventors, and the greatest of inventors are the newspapermen. Neither the army nor the navy is of any protection, or very little protection, against aerial raids. The nation that secures control of the air will ultimately control the world. Before anything else, Preparation is the key to success. My knowledge of electrical subjects was not acquired in a methodical manner, but was picked up from such books as I could get hold of and from such experiments as I could make with my own hands. Perseverance must have some practical end, or it does not avail the man possessing it. Be not the first by whom the new are tried, nor yet the last to lay the old aside. All really big discoveries are the results of thought. We so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. God has strewn our paths with wonders and we certainly should not go through life with our eyes shut. The only difference between success and failure is the ability to take action. I may be given credit for having blazed the trail, but when I look at the subsequent developments, I feel the credit is due to others rather than to myself. To tell you the truth, as a practical man, I did not believe it. As a theoretical man, I saw a speaking telephone, and that theoretically we had the means of reproducing speech in distant places. They came and talked successfully through the telephone, so that Japanese was the first foreign language to be spoken over the telephone. I had made up my mind to find that for which I was searching even if it required the remainder of my life. After innumerable failures, I finally uncovered the principle for which I was searching, and I was astounded at its simplicity. When one door closes, another opens, but we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which is opened for us. The day will come when the man at the telephone will be able to see the distant person to whom he is speaking. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. The achievement of one goal should be the starting point of another. Great discoveries and improvements invariably involve the cooperation of many minds. Don't keep forever on the public road, going only where others have gone, and following one after the other like a flock of sheep. Leave the beaten track occasionally and dive into the woods. You cannot force ideas, successful ideas, are the result of slow growth. Ideas do not reach perfection in a day, no matter how much study is put upon them. A man, as a general rule, owes very little to what he is born with. A man is what he makes of himself. One day, every major city in America will have a telephone. Night is a more quiet time to work. It aids thought 